Every franchise has an underdog weapon, a gun or tool the skilled player can fall back on in a pinch to save you when you're seconds away from disaster. From the box art, we can see the bow and arrow is where all the praise and the glory and the accolades went. But what about something for the simple adventurer with bad eyesight? Can you beat Tomb Raider with only a climbing axe? The story of Laura Croft kicks off in a dramatic fashion as our nameless protagonist plunges into the drink. She was aboard the USS Endurance when a violent storm rocked the ship, marooning herself, Gilligan, the guy who invented Roth IRAs, and a couple others on the island. Laura really got herself into a pickle this time. Not only is she f***ed, she's super f***ed. Tied up and left for dead, the skeleton I burned loose knocked the floor out from under me. I burnt my legs, fell onto a piece of rebar, ripped it out, and gained complete control of the character. In the context of this video, when I say, with only a climbing axe in the title, I'm talking about combat exclusively. This is a platformer action adventure puzzle game. Combat should really be an afterthought, but it's not. I have this bad habit of being extraordinarily melodramatic over the smallest roadblock. That being said, this challenge is up there with Doom with only a pistol and Fallout 3 with my eyes as one of the most brutally difficult challenges I've attempted. I picked Tomb Raider because how long to beat pegged it as a relatively quick 11 hour romp through the jungle. Not only did it take me more than double that, you don't get the f***ing climbing axe until you're like 6 hours into the game. Is that A, a problem, B, an issue, or C, time for me to buy a thesaurus? I don't have all the answers. What I do have is a torch. Fire in the form of a flaming stick. The torch is one of the many tools available to us in this adventure. It can be used to light objects on fire. Anything from ropes to boxes to red barrels can be lit on fire, but it's not a combat tool. Here, it's used to solve a puzzle. I heard the voodoo man say he was trying to help me as the ceiling descended towards my face. I let the rock take me, didn't fight back the next time, and got crushed all the same. There are a lot of gruesome deaths in Tomb Raider. I'd hoped to see her get squished between the walls. Instead, she inched and crawled through the mud and emerged out into the real game. On the way to the beach, I ran through the basics of Tomb Raider's platforming. All the classics are here. Woodwalking, jumping the gap, climbing up makeshift ladders throughout the environment, the wall assisted double jump, and of course, stealing. Moments after I stole the two-way radio, I wonder who's handy that will come into later. A storm rolled in, forcing me to postpone my search for my friends. I sought shelter in the woods, made my first campsite, and watched an old video to remind the player that characters exist and there's context for what's happening. We're searching for the Dragon's Triangle. Bermuda is the dragon's name. That's the simple explanation for what's going on here. In the morning, the storm had passed, and I retrieved a longbow from a corpse. Why? Laura hungry. If you've never played this game, don't wear your little heart out worrying. There are no survival mechanics outside of needing food this one time. When told to use a bow to kill a deer, knowing that I couldn't, I first tried to use gravity to kill one. I was shocked when that didn't work. I'm also not a hunter and I don't understand animals. Then, I ran with the deer. If I had a climbing axe, I'd use it here. If I had my backup strats, I'd trick the deer into killing themselves. That's a real thing that's gonna happen a few minutes from now. No way forward but to shoot the deer. I'm an expert hunter. I hit him right between the eyes like you're supposed to. Took half a sandwich's worth of meat from his 400 pound carcass, went back to camp, and took a look at the skills I have to choose from. There are three trees. Only two are visible now. I've got Survivor and Hunter available now. Hunters mostly bow upgrades and increasing ammo counts. Nothing useful there. Survivor deals with looting mechanics. You can loot ammo from dead bodies and find salvage in boxes around the island. Salvage is then used to upgrade your weapons. The Climbing Axe has two upgrades. They're both story driven. You don't unlock it with salvage, so the skill mechanic is almost entirely worthless. The voice in my head led me into the cabin in the woods where I found a monument to all my sins. It's the inside of a mask, but it made me laugh so f***ing hard. The path to that worthless artifact led me down a ladder hole, into the depths of an underground mineshaft where I obtained my sacred weapon, the climbing axe. You're confused? I understand. What I meant to say earlier was that you don't get the skill to use the climbing axe as a weapon until you're like 6 hours in. It cannot be used in combat right now. I need to spend 5 skill points to unlock the tier that has the climbing axe wax skill in it. Back at camp, I reunited with my old buddy Sam and her new friend Matthias, who was intrigued by Sam's storytelling ability. She spoke of an ancient warrior queen who commanded a warrior of samurais. The sun itself bowed before her. In a split second, I fell asleep, woke up, my friend and her friend were gone. I set off into the woods to find them. My leg got caught in a wild bear trap, and I was forced to use the bow and arrow to slay the forest puppies coming to see what the inside of my neck looks like. Good news, 
old friends are nowhere to be seen. Better news, other friends are here. There's Tito and Old Man and Reyes, and they're so unimportant that you don't need to know who's who. Although, I, I will say this, Whitman's the guy fascinated with the glory that comes from discovering artifacts. To get inside the ruin we found, I had to find Salvage to get the one climbing axe salvage upgrade I mentioned in the last paragraph. Still doesn't work in combat, but it does allow for the use of cranks. I covered up before going any further, I'm not your whore, and we were ambushed. Whitman let his gun down, told me to go along with them, I got slapped, was introduced to stealth mechanics, standard avoid the light, avoid the sight gameplay, and almost escaped the camp before the guard nabbed me. After a heated fight, I blew the front bit of his dome into orbit with a gun. Had I not, I'd have been choked to death. Now that I've got a gun, the game throws real combat at me for the first time in a closed off close quarters encounter with two enemies. Later on, you can use the Y button to attack enemies with the axe. For now, it's the almost shoulder tackle button. You do a shoulder tackle, but you don't hit anyone with it. They jump backwards to avoid the attack. Did I mention this is a platformer? All you need is a ledge and an adept level understanding of how to scramble and you can trick anyone into falling backwards off a cliff to their death. Doesn't need to be a big cliff, it might take multiple falls, but die they will. Without a ledge? Yeah, no, you're f***ed. I used my creativity throughout this run to test the limits of what's possible. I ran backwards to avoid the fight. That gives you a lot of bullets all over the place. From your right shoulder to your left shoulder, it's just awful. Had to kill the two guys with a knot climbing axe to unlock the door and immediately hit another mandatory knot axe section, this time with the bow. Up ahead's where I picked up on pushing people to their death. I figured it out pretty damn quick once I figured out that it was my only way to kill the cult soldiers. By the second fight with ledge tactics in my head, I'd started running around the edges of the area, looking for places to ambush enemies. Make no mistake, what Laura Croft lacks in humor, she more than makes up for in outdoorsy ability, but she is quite frail outside of cutscenes. If you take sustained fire for about 4 seconds, you die. Two guys shooting? Try three seconds. More than that, and you're looking at an almost instant death. It carries throughout the entire game. If anything, it gets worse, because the enemies get better weapons and become tougher while you don't. You can't waste the movement. You can't make mistakes. In between glimpses of hell, I realized Tomb Raider is a game about mountain climbing adventures. For you newbies to this channel, let me fill you in on a little secret. There's nothing I love more than the idea of climbing a mountain. This guy, Conrad Roth, he needed medical supplies, stashed away with the GPS tracker in the fanny pack, up the hill in the plane teetering on the edge of oblivion. Having saved his life, Roth told me to take a stroll up to the radio tower and broadcast a distress signal to any passing planes. He'd do it, but this isn't his game. In the deserted ruins of a water town, I got into a fight with a knife-wielding maniac. Despite the bad guys usually jumping backwards like Neanderthals, sometimes they get real pissy and hit you back multiple times in quick succession. Also, you can't run or shoulder tackle or scramble in the water. Best to avoid it if possible. Some enemies can be avoided as well. Not everyone has to die. At another camp, I had a decision to make regarding skills. There's a skill that lets you toss up dirt in the air to blind your foes, but I'm a fan of the scramble tackle technique. Killing people with the environment is satisfying as all hell. No reason to make it easier. I had what you might call positive energy flowing through me in spite of the many, many setbacks and small screw-ups that chipped away at my inner self. See, they give you a shotgun, slow down time, and throw a bunch of enemies in your face to tempt you. The only way to get rid of them was to lure them up to the catwalk. If you sit behind cover where they can't see you, they'll walk towards you regardless of what class of enemy they are. By sitting behind cover near a ledge, I could pop out, push someone off, and repeat until they were all dead. Back outside, I neared the tower and assumed I hit a blockade. I started off nowhere near a ledge with no cover. By dodging attacks and jumping around like an insane person, I ran through them all until I found the one small area I could perch myself on and get back to the business of breaking backs. It went well until the shield man came out to play. He doesn't do jumping, he's unfazed by my body shots. His death could only come with a gun, for now. With him dead, I climbed a couple ladders all the way to the top of the radio tower, played around with the dials to find the right station. A big metal bird heard my cries, but they needed a visual signal before they can land. That sounds like a great job for the ground team, not those of us hundreds of feet up in the air. I got the job done anyway, and misfortune flashed me again. The plane saw the signal all right, but one cloud had a really bad day and took it out on the plane. It damn near crashed into me. The pilot seemingly almost survived. Uh, no he didn't. I couldn't kill his murderer. He's one of those no-jumpers. I ollied the gap and took a rest at the campsite and another storm hit. I got my foot caught in a trap while searching for a way to Roth and the gang. Upside down, I couldn't fight back without a gun. 
I had to tear a couple houses down with fools still inside and regrouped with Roth. Another pilot radioed in. He's trapped in the forest. A smoke signal showed his position. Getting there took me through a precarious situation. I've had cover and no cover, but never vertical cover. I inched towards death to get that kill. Ascended into the Hall of Ascension and used the wind to solve a puzzle. Open the window, wait a moment, pull up the platform, jump onto the railing, and you win <gasps> the parts for a gun. Also a skill point. Good towards one free skill in the skill tree. A hop, skip, and a fall over a mountain, I tracked Captain Jessup. He'd ran inside a cave for shelter, sat by the bridge and waited. I showed up, just as Matthias emerged to reveal he'd gone mad. One abduction later, I woke up, hands bound, in the human jerky room. A giant rumbles in the distance. I fell and made an escape. Running in the wrong direction thankfully results in a satisfying squashing by what appears to be an armored ogre. In making yet another escape, we learn that this island is home to the Yamatai, a long-lost kingdom of ancient Japan near where Tomb Raider takes place in the Pacific Ocean region. No time to celebrate learning something, attackers on the scene. The trick is to ring the gate's bell and crawl through the tunnel. You can get there and trigger the cutscene, but the boys you left behind have other ideas. Should you try to advance without taking them out, they'll throw an insta-kill grenade into the tunnel to stop you. What I've got to defend myself is still nothing, but I remember the bow's secondary use, attaching the ropes to objects. People are objects. I got smitten by a static screen the second I killed a guy with a bow, had another chance to take the handful of dirt skill to aid me in combat, and again I refused. I battled an angry wind outside, and hit another arena. If I were to tell you about every trial and every tribulation I faced, you'd be here for video length plus one minute. I had a puzzle to solve involving the windows and a climbing axe crank, but I can't do the puzzle until the room's cleared of riffraff. More enemies attacking obviously means more enemies to keep track of, but it clogs up my balcony. This is the single location in this play space I can use to snap spines with gravity. To put into perspective how important each movement is, I died trying to make this jump because I messed up the timing and had to climb up. The seconds it took me to reposition myself opened a window for one guy to peek in and shoot me. I spent about 20 minutes here, scrambling around, pushing people off this ledge. Just before solving the puzzle, a couple new friends arrived, namely a spearman, incapable of falling. No life alert for him. I knocked the bell loose, it opened up a gaping hole in the floor, I fell into the ogre pit and really gave it a good college try trying to get eaten by him. I gave up and dropped out. Didn't burn any bridges, but they're not completely intact anymore. Sam radioed in after I got my wits about me. She's in the Solari base down the mountain. I finally got to see Laura's head on a spike. That was wonderful. Then the glass under the plane broke, my chute gave out, and I impaled myself on a tree spike before crash landing into a tree and finding myself at the temple. First things first, I need a band-aid or maybe a strip of scotch tape. The nearby shanty towns got some somewhere, enemies afoot, and with my grievous injuries, I can't jump or scramble without keeling over in pain. Still can't attack, so my two methods of avoiding damage are gone. A few attempts in, I saw my end goal, a wooden bridge, just up the stairs and around the corner. All I had to do was survive the trip to the wood, and I'd be home free. Slow and steady gets you a participation trophy. I needed the gold. I ate the pain that comes from jumping, crossed the wood, and used my vast brain power to lure the next few soldiers over the edge where I could send them away. First guy's easy. Second guy takes some thought. He won't come straight back. You have to surprise him in his spot and push him off. Third guy? I got nothing. No way past him, and no ledges to push him off. Couldn't even get near him without getting shot. I didn't even try to kill him. That's another point for the counter, but another point for team of my life. I got the medical supplies. A zippo I used to burn the wound shut. You get fire arrows here. There's a brief sequence with them. You can get by using a single arrow. The area swarms with hostility as you make your way to the gate and it slams shut. You're in the sh** now. There are five areas of Tomb Raider I'd characterize as horrendously, mind-numbingly, brutally difficult. And this is one of them. I spent a couple days here. I don't know where to begin. So, for starters, the goal is to escape by burning the shirt off this gate and lifting it with your axe crank. Unless every single enemy in the area is dead, you cannot lift the gate. Someone will summon themselves to throw a firebomb at you. Out of thin air, hell, it might just be God messing with me. The amount of people you're expected to get rid of is off the charts stupid, and now they're getting into automatic weapon territory. What I said earlier about getting killed in an instant, that's becoming more apparent now than ever before. For a while, I was using this L-shaped landing as my ledge of choice. Easy to reach from spawn, cover, and corners, but the fall is real shallow, and there's too much room to breathe. In a panic, I retreated up to a room sealed off by a shotgun blast barricade. This is my happy place. One way in, one way out, cover to the left, 
It's so pretty in here. One by one, each man jumped up the wall to rescue me from my tower. And one by one, I sent them all back down. Mistakes do happen, and the setbacks are monumental. You can lose 15 minutes of progress because you looked away to sneeze. Over the course of hours, I lost faith in my ability to do this and cheated. I looked up a speedrunning guide on YouTube. By sheer f***ing coincidence, I happened to get stuck with a checkpoint at the perfect spot to pull off an exploit to skip this entire fight. How you do it, I can't say for sure. The videos I watched either didn't have commentary, or the people doing commentary weren't talking about how they were doing what they were doing. You run backwards towards the cameraman and the gate. Do a spin move with the joystick to swap over to a bow and arrow, lock in your aim, flick the left thumbstick to the left, and never pull this off because you suck. Several real days later, I located a newer, better perch to sit on. Location, location, location is the name of the game. This tower's uniquely positioned to force each would-be attacker to jump this gap before they can open fire. The space to walk around that corner is small enough that they won't do it. By the time their feet land on the platform, I've already leapt off the ground and am hurtling towards them. They fly back and go sailing off into the nether. As the last man hit the earth, silence took over the town. There's nobody left. I was free to open the gate and investigate the next level of Dante's Inferno. A storm of dynamite blew a piece of sheet metal over the ladder. The way up is impassable now. Jump over and catch the ledge? No, no. Land in the water and swim across. No! There might as well be an invisible kill floor somewhere. No cover grants survival. So, there's no way over to them their attackers. Unable to do anything but turn this into a real life simulator by running around aimlessly waiting to die, I pulled out my bow and started fighting back. After my supply of arrows ran out, I swapped to a handy dandy gun to finish off the attackers. Once several of them ate lead, a fellow bowman shot a string across the gap, allowing enemies to slide over into my neck of the woods where I could knock them down into the kill floor. Only four remain, and they're unwilling to ride the slide. I attempted to wait them out, but it wasn't working. I had to use the gun again. The way up to Grimm has been destroyed, so I'm off to find another way to reach him. Laura and I climbed on the ropes, played on the monkey bars, and even walked the plank just for fun. And here's where the game takes a drastic turn, arguably for the worse if you dislike pain, or for the better if you don't. My baby boy, my climbing axe has grown up right before my eyes. He's a combat axe now. Rather than pushing enemies to their ultimate demise, I can just whack and bash and beat the piss out of them until their life ends. This is where the real game begins. The actual challenge has arrived. In one sense, it's a mindless button mashing combat game. Hit once to daze, hit again to stun, and finish off with a crack in their skull the size of the Grand Canyon. Just like with the last combat segment, many of these guys do not act like good little lemmings and jump over to me. So I started to improvise. The bow has a limited number of arrows, but to prevent soft locking the game, the arrows with ropes tied to them have no limit, and while they can kill in a couple hits, they can also be used to drag people off cliffs in situations like these. All things considered, I think this is a more than satisfactory solution to the problem of ranged combat. Does it defeat the purpose of the challenge? No sh**, of course it does, but there are two things I'm not. One is an idiot. I knew it failed the challenge as I was doing it. The second thing I'm not is bad at math. The third thing is I'm sometimes forgetful. When the fighting stopped, Grim went to meet the Reaper. Him using my beloved fall damage as a form of suicide is something I'll never forget. I did look for a body to reel up, but he's fish food now. But guess who's back? It's Roth. I was blinded by his light, he agreed to cover me, and I set off for that very friendly looking bridge. This is nothing more than a section for babies. Press the right button at the right time and you win. Sadly, I suck more at this than an elephant does at killing mice. I plummeted once, twice, even three times. In time, through trial and error, I made it across the bridge, up the rock, into the cave, under the drink, and found myself at the sacrificial chamber where Matthias is about to give up Sam to the main antagonist of Borderlands 3. Yeah, so believe it or not, they got me. One chick with a piece of wood against an army didn't stand a chance, as Sam prepared to become a burning charred corpse. A mighty wind erupted and proclaimed her as its chosen one. I, of course, could beat two guys, so we're back to doing a rescue mission. Slowly, I made my way through the geothermal cabins. One guy got caught up in the stinky flames. I couldn't stand for that, so I reloaded a checkpoint. Almost killed myself on accident to save this clown, and ran face first into trouble. The problem with combat axe oriented combat is Laura, at her core, is still made of flesh and bone. Sure, it's easy to take out one or two of these guys when they're attacking, but get into a crowd with multiple bad guys opening fire and you die in an instant. Plus, 
We're at a point where superior forces are being thrown at us. One finishing move doesn't kill them. Gotta hit the sweet spot twice just to take out one guy. It's a very long game of sit as far back behind cover as I possibly can, wait for one person to come by, take them out, retreat, and hope to god no mistakes are made. It might sound like classic mitten squad b***ing, but I spent almost 10 minutes just in this one room. With the area cleared, I found a few of my remaining friends trapped in jail. Solve a puzzle, it's not very difficult, you just gotta fire a flaming arrow through these gas leaks to free them and escape the cave to find Sam and Whitman. My actions inadvertently led to the destruction of this entire town. It's going down in flames. The only way out is through the Solari Fortress where I ran into Whitman, Sam, and Matthias. It's all coming together now. Whitman is almost certainly working with Matthias now. Well, that doesn't matter anyway. I'm in hell now. From here on out, the instances of brutally difficult combat are going to become commonplace. Why? Simple. There are now guys with explosives who will sometimes off themselves if you get too close. That of course is in addition to the guys with guns who shoot constantly and the guys who need two attack animations to kill. I'm gonna add a death counter to this room specifically to give you a taste of the pain. Oh, and cover is borderline non-existent with how many guys are shooting from so many different angles. In the midst of battle, it's difficult to tell who's who, who's got the dynamite and who doesn't, who's suicidal and who isn't. To avoid damage, you've got to constantly be jumping and moving and rolling around. Situational awareness of the highest order is nothing short of a bare necessity. Don't get greedy. You can deal damage and kill without an animation. Just takes a hell of a lot longer. Maybe five or six attacks versus two to three. Simultaneously avoiding damage while being cognizant of where you can stop for cover and where all enemies are made this the most infuriating 15 minutes of this video yet. The fun continued after I cleared this room and pressed through the burning bowels because shieldmen have arrived on the scene. These f**ks make melee combat more of a pain in the ass than it already is. I guess that's why there's a hook at the end of the axe, to keep me from shoving it so far up their ass as I penetrate their brain. You're not gonna believe this, s*** just got worse. Go back, two combat segments, and I complained about it taking 10 minutes. Then, the most recent was 15 minutes. This one though, grab some glue, fill your socks with it, and put that bitch back on. On your foot, not anywhere else, unless you've got a crush on your Uncle Elmer. Wait for the glue to dry, and get ready. I spent an hour and 15 minutes here over the course of three separate days. There's a lot to take in, and I'm gonna do my best to articulate with words the pain I went through. So, the two guys way in the back with the heavy machine guns are nasty, nasty c**ts. You already know about Laura's low health. Just to put in perspective, I nearly died in the split second it took me to jump from this cover to that there wall. The bullets are big, Laura's small, and they pack a big punch. That's in addition to the guys I've already described. Those who are ready for the end times with their sticks of explosives are on the scene. I'll spare you the 45 minutes of trying to kill them with traditional means and jump right to the end. See that gap in the gate acts as an invisible wall. When you get deep enough into the area, a fire causes debris to fall, blocking your way back. But if you run into the fray and use your body as bait, you can lure the floormen all the way back into the room right in front. They can't go any further and generally can't attack if you're sitting in this corner. Given enough time and taunting, the explosive wielding maniac will fully commit to Sudoku and give up, taking all the other foes with him, leaving only the big men upstairs. You're supposed to use the grenade launcher you found in the cutscene prior. That would have been nice. I tried climbing up there and immediately walloping them both with my bar, but they simply do too much damage too quick and death sets you back behind the gate. Even one of them alone can kill you in the time it takes to blink a couple times. To get by them without using guns, or, for instance, the bow you might have forgotten you had, you have to somehow make it to the wall, hug that bitch like you love it, and move over to the right. Wait it out. Do some more taunting, and force one of them to jump down. Don't you f***ing dare make a mistake. Take him out with pinpoint precision and retreat to the gate like your entire bloodline depends on it. Then, for the second time in one life, make the last remaining soldier come down as well. Take him out, take a breather, sit down for the night. You've earned it, it's over, they're all dead. After telling Sam to run, she should be a marathoner at this point, it's a bit more of the same. Heavy gunners up top and a large number of foes. However, in this area, there are far more opportunities to hide from his fire and places to sit where they come after you one at a time. Child's play compared to the adult world of taxes we just came from. Hell, it's almost a breath of fresh air. We can both hit people with the axe and knock them on their fannies. Then there's the mounted turret. Flaming arrows bother him none, and there's no way up to him. 
I had to use the grenade launcher to take him out and rescue Sam again. Some platforming over precarious fire pits. We've seen this before, it's not scary anymore. Up on the roof, Roth arrived with the helicopter. We've done it. We made it out alive. Oh shit. Our friends are down there. Ah oh, shit. Laura's lost it. Ah oh, shit. shit. Just keeps getting worse. We've crashed. Cool. Great. You know, I actually wanted to crash. Just like when that Uber Eats driver forgot Satan's straw, it's exactly what I was counting on. Roth had a leg owie, sucked the air out of Laura's lungs, and died in the ensuing chaos from an axe in his spine. That's gonna leave a mark on my soul. In return for his death, we've learned how to hold two guns at the same time. And at least we're all together again. In the following cutscene, we learn that there's animosity towards Laura for helping everyone and that this place is cursed. Escaping the forest took a bit of effort on my part. Not like insanely difficult, but I've gotta kill dogs. And I've only ever killed two animals in my life. One was a deer I hit with my car, and the other was a small rodent my dog tore apart when I was 15 that my mom made me hit with a shovel to end its misery. At the very least, I did tell it I was sorry before I dropped him in the trash can. I didn't apologize to that deer. As far as I'm concerned, he hit my car with his body. There's room to move around and avoid gunfire out here in the land of sticks. Out of the forest, I hit the shanty town and began heading for the beach. I'd make a joke about walking barefoot in the sand, but with all the water Laura's walk through, I don't really want to see what her feet look like. Or do I? No, I don't, I don't think I do. Some more needless violence up here with the clouds. Tricky with those bombers, but goddamn, I've gotten good at handling these situations. The strategies at play here are the same you've been seeing for a while. They turned off my brain a few times when it splattered all over the wooden floorboards. I handled myself fine after that, I think. My spine should have looked like Roth's after that fall. Grab the conveniently painted my favorite colored bars to not fall. Do some quick time events. Don't go into the drink. And we're on the beach, and what remains of the gang is all here. There's a loot crate stuffed in the boat that Jonah wants to open. Our best bet is some sort of super rig out on the destroyed boat. A quick hop, skip, and a jump got me inside. This is a block and tackle? It's a boat thing, I guess. Tackling on a canoe seems dangerous, but what do I know? I'm not a fish, I'm a sloth. We don't go in the water. Whitman came screaming out of the forest and convinced the squad that he's here to help. Before setting off for wherever I'm off to this time, I got a super bow from Jonah capable of harpooning a rope in just about anything. Now, I can shoot rope arrows into rock walls instead of just other ropes. At the wreck of the USS Endurance, ironic name for this broken piece of shit, I got stuck again. The old devils are at it again, causing a ruckus in my efforts to save the day. Another machine gun guy up top out of reach until the basement dwellers are eliminated and several more downstairs where, conveniently for them, there isn't much cover. The one spot I've got available is in the line of sight of upstairs guy. They don't immediately know I'm in their vicinity, so I've got a free sneak attack on one soldier. The rest bring the pain. I only survived this room through my stubbornness and unwillingness to cheat again unless I truly had no other options. I can only describe my final run through as, I got lucky. I took out a few of the men inside and happened to lure them to me in the right order that let me kill them and run for cover. The last attempt took about 5 minutes. That doesn't sound bad, but it's why I compared it to Doom. You've gotta make no mistakes for 5 minutes straight or else you're back to square one, starting the arena over again. Then, something extraordinary happened. What one might call a calamitous series of events unfolded that I didn't anticipate using as a weapon of last resort. I'm talking about my weapons. I used them, just not on anyone. There's two gunners waiting for you at the top of the stairs, and I wasn't risking death to run up those steps just to have to do this all over again. Alternatively, you can blow apart this cement beam, and if you time your jump perfectly, you can skip the staircase and jump right on top to the upper level. This is a glitch, a speedrunning tactic, and at the risk of spoiling what's coming, it wouldn't be the last time I used speed to my advantage. I put Laura in blue for a reason. I took the fight to those stairmasters from behind, died, and respawned with the room empty, allowing me to practice timing these jumps again. It's an important skill to have for later. To make it up that platform, I had to wait for one of the exploders to f*** up and take his friends with him, leap to the platform, get outside, and glide down to the Endurance. It's boss time, in the form of a big old monster of a man who fights with his fists instead of guns or weapons. He can't be damaged with the axe. It's as simple as that. Get too close, and he grabs you and dozens of hits in one life showed no signs of causing harm. I blasted him in between the eyes with my compound rope shooter, finished him off with a hook to the jugular, obtained yet another rope tool to put on my already crowded utility belt, hacked and slashed my way through the ship, 
and found Alex, who'd ran off to help us out. His leg got squished by a large pipe. He wasn't going anywhere. He made the ultimate sacrifice. He pressed the escape key one final time, granting Laura time to flee the exploding ship and return to the beach with the tools he foolishly set out to find. Something on the island is alive. It's like some ancient monkey put a curse on this island. There's probably knowledge at the old research base. It was a standard regulation climb up there. Nothing too spectacular aside from watching my only way back fall back down to the surface of the earth. After hardcore parkouring my way to the research base, I got cut down to size by a pair of swordsmen with their shotgun wielding pussy of a stepbrother who brings a gun to a sword fight. Had to perform a tactical withdrawal and use gaps in the railing to my advantage this time. In the base, I faced, without a doubt or hint of exaggeration, my biggest challenge yet. God damn did this f***ing puzzle bother me. I spent more time here, then I got into what feels like half a video might as well be a lifetime ago. I found a samurai wearing ancient Halo Infinite Season 3 Spartan armor, available today for 15 bucks because 343 are the worst thing to happen to Halo since Bungie abandoned their armored baby. I retrieved the sword from his sternum in my Prince Arthur moment, learned that the queen of the island is trapped in a half-life, half-death situation following a ritual gone wrong. Her trapped soul is what's causing the flood, and Sam is to be the Solari's vessel to bring her back, allowing them to finally escape the island. Soldiers stormed into the room to stop me, causing a fight the likes of which you've seen before if you've made it this far into the video. If you haven't seen this before, how the f*** did you get here? I tried and tried and tried, even kept trying to get these jokers to attempt to use practical effects in vain, hopefully taking them out with a Molotov cocktail throw gone awry. It can't be done, damn these guys are good, but nobody survives, having their jawbone ripped off by my compound bow. I ended one with a bow. The remaining goons, one by one, ran towards me like I was the angel of death and they wanted a hug. And I escaped the building once again. If alcohol poisoning's your thing, take a shot every time I escape from a building. Then, make it a double for all those times I haven't told you about. Or, make it a triple if you've got a newborn at home. You know what? This, this isn't a good joke. Back to the beach with me, you scallywag. There, I convinced them. The two people left to take the boat deep into the island to find Hurley and make him give me his special water, or find the monastery and stop this madness, whichever comes first. Now the real shit's about to kick off. The Storm Guard, the ancient queen's royal guards, have awoken and are not in the mood for funny business. There goes Whitman, and there goes that rat for no reason. I snuck through the temple, witnessed the true might of the Storm Guard, saw the big guy getting fitted for his costume, fell through a cave ramp, and fought the royal guards for the first time. That flaming fireball from behind things back again too. Can't open the door until the royal family is no more. They're all double Ds, they take double damage, two animation attacks to send back to their eternal slumber. This is, if my memory serves me well, one of the final battles. Maybe not the be all end all, but none before this have gotten a cutscene just to show off everything I'ma have to slaughter. There's good news and bad news. Good news is, while there are so many storm guards, I've got a perch I can sit on to knock them off one by one. It's not quick, nor is it pretty or as satisfying, but it's safe and effective. Bad news. Good things never last. Flaming bowmen are here too. That put an end to that. I can kill them no problem, provided I'm not covered in third degree burns when I go in for the kill. The real bad mans are those with both sword and shield. Also, just gonna point this out and we'll be back to suffering, the closer to the final gate I run, the more guys come out. The swords and shields wearing sandals are more or less immune to my melee attacks. The arrow pushers and basic bitch I can handle in time. These guys, I have no offensive moves to use against them. They don't care when I attack, so I can't knock them off a cliff to make gravity carry the load for me. This is where we are now. I'm stuck, and I was so caught up in being near the end of the game that I didn't use the bow. Also due to the fact that my ropes are not tight enough to bother them. They used to be mummies. They probably liked it. Failure won the day. I defeated the storm guard and entered the temple to find Sam. The leader of the storm guard was defeated by wind, solving that problem similar to how I solved the problem of this puzzle. I uncovered the truth about Himiko, the first queen. Sam is to be the vessel for her return, and I confronted Matthias. A storm zapped the floor causing a fire and Matthias to flee with woman into building. Wall climbing into whatnot, climbing some more, climbing some more, climbing again, zap, and here we are, at the end of the line. Matthias has awoken Himiko, and she's begun to restore her 10 terabyte backup into Sam. That's gonna take a while. That's okay. It's gonna take me a while to get there. I'll be blunt, this sucked. Everything I've talked about regarding enemy encounters has led to this. All those people I pushed to an early grave have, with their combined final breaths, summoned a freezing arctic wind that slows me down. 
heavy machine gunners who kill in the time it takes to climb a ledge, bomb throwers destroying the little high ground I could use. There's no other cover in this open space. I gave it a good old college try, but refused to play by society's rules, just like I did in real life, and dropped out. I watched a speed run that showed someone doing a highly coordinated jump routine that involved leaping onto a small space on this beam behind where I spawn. Use the arrow to aim at the rock before jumping up, going around the pole, and landing on that space. Then make an against all odds jump over to the bridge, and there it is! The end! Run towards Sam, trigger the cutscene, and... uh... That's odd. Maybe if you run over to this area, then run back, it'll trigger the cutscene. And there's an invisible wall blocking the way back. That's fun. M maybe I just did something wrong. I killed myself, got on the pole again, and made it back to the bridge where the cutscene would again not trigger. Turns out, I didn't know this when I sold my soul to land that jump, that glitch got patched and I'm playing the remastered version. I did everything right, but it just didn't work out. On one hand, I won. This should be the end of the game. On the other hand, it isn't. What's a girl to do when cheating fails? Attack her best friend? That's foolish. I was out of options, and out of all the obstacles I faced so far, this one seemed to be the one I couldn't overcome. I used all my knowledge and all my skills to throw a handful of lives at the soldiers in my way in some Hail Mary last ditch effort to f*** that fork in the road to death, but every single time I failed. They move as a unit. The moment I come out from behind cover, I'm nearly dead. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Something like 8 to 10 guys will come out to play as I f***ing blow up because there's one of them too. In my best attempts, I made it to this far off corner, but by that point even my controller was growing tired. And should I get stuck back here, I have no means of escape. I'll add a death counter for this final battle too, because you need to see this from my perspective, through my eyes. I won't include the deaths from jumping over to that bridge, only combat. Maybe you thought I was gonna give up and cheat, use the bow or some sh**. I don't think so. I spent an amount of time I'm not comfortable disclosing on this last segment of Torment. I'll even upload the final full run as an unlisted video to prove it. In time, I did it. Phase 1 of the push towards Sam is over. Here comes Phase 2. Oh yeah, we're not done yet. In Phase 2, I did have some cover to work with, and there are fewer ground forces to contend with. The issue is now those guys up there. From down here, they can't see me attack. However, they also aren't of the bomb throwing variety. They'll never accidentally end their own lives, meaning it's up to me to take one for the team and do it for them from a safe distance. Actually, it's just that one guy. I did try waiting him out for about 15 minutes before I did that because I really didn't want to do that after all this time, but nothing happened. I did away with him and moved on to phase 3. Just a bit of platforming, and the Ancient One, supposedly offed by a gust of wind a while back, has returned from his wintry grave. That doesn't bode well for me at all. If their guns don't bother him, why would my wand? In fact, I can't even hit him. If I get close, it triggers this animation. Like I said, this sucks. He is the final boss incarnate. I suppose it's only natural that I use all the tools at my disposal just this once to take him out. Nothing crazy here. Shoot him with a shotgun from behind to stun him. Then look at that, the crowbar actually does the work. I knew it. Couple guys come in to distract me. I'm basically Jesus at this point. They could be literal demons and it wouldn't bother me. One last shot to the back. A series of blows to the head. Oh no, he's got an ear infection. And look where we are now. Phase 4. Matthias made one last ditch effort to stop me from fulfilling his plans. Bastard even tried to use my own son against me. For that, I filled him with lead. Became the Tomb Raider. Rescued Sam. Himiko is dead and she's never coming back. We safely fled the island and I didn't beat Tomb Raider with only a climbing axe. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything, leave a dislike. Follow me on Twitter, at MittenSquad. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters, as well as other channel members, for making videos like this one possible. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.